Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Didn't Really Name It and this is a video podcast with Zain Samdani. Now, Zain is the founder of ExoHeal for which he has been recognized on various national and international platforms like Adi Shankara Young Scientist, Iris, Google Science Fair and as a young global team leader at New York's Chess Peace Summit and NASA for his invention of an innovative portable robotic device utilizing neuroplasticity to help out patients suffering from hand paralysis to recover 30% faster and in today's episode we'll be talking about his journey and how he made it to Google Science Fair twice and how he began as a very young researcher and took his projects from dream to a reality so yeah let's begin So thank you for coming Zain it means a lot that you are here welcome to the show it's a it's a pleasure to be here thank you so uh let's track all of this down i've seen all of the honors the awards the achievements all of this i've seen this all let's track all of this down how did all of this begin ooh okay so how did all of this begin all right uh so my interest in robotics began with my mother So when I was so when I was so uh, so when I was a child uh I saw my I saw my mom spending all of her time taking care of me my sisters in her household activities and I realized that she wasn't left with much time for herself all right and this sort of inspired me to uh, inspired me to have this dream of making a humanoid robot that could help uh, mothers with their children around the world So that's how so 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 that's how my journey I uh, actually started out all right and uh, and and a few years down the line I've been trying to do everything I can in terms of robotics trying to expand my knowledge in, in order to realize this dream and uh, again okay, and uh, what do you call it and because of this I was able to create I've made I've been multiple projects over the years I've made affordable processes I've made helping robots and most famously I've made exoteam a robotic device that helps patients uh for suffering from paralysis recover 30% faster it's really nice the way that you've pulled everything and you're really young so that this gives you a headway to expand even more in this field people take years mm-hmm. to do this kind of stuff that's amazing so you went on to google science fair in 2016 and in 2019 so how did it all happen for a 15 year old guy living in saudi arabia and riyadh Okay, okay, all right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, like uh so to be completely honest with you, uh the one thing that drove me to to vigorously take part in the Google Science Fair was having someone to compete with. So, uh so so we so we actually had a new senior join join in our school and he was all the sciencey type and he loved taking part in these competitions and so we connected right away and he was going and he was entering the Google Science Fair with his own project. okay and that prompted me to work towards the google science fair as well and having this sense of and having this sense of of healthy rivalry okay with with someone you already know helps propel helps to propel you to such an extent where where, where you are not just competing with yourself but competing with others in the same domain as well so uh okay, so that's what got me to take part in the google science fair back in 2016 first but But to be honest, all right, I rem- I remember telling my mom about this. the The very next day after giving in my submission, I told my mom that I, I told my mom that I would research more and I would and I would make a better application next year. Okay, I had I had no idea what you call it. I wasn't expecting to be selected as a global finalist at all. Okay, L- like. Uh, like this was something totally to- totally out of my scope with it with my mind but luckily uh but what but luckily I was selected as a regional finalist and then I had to go through a series of interviews by persons from Google by persons from their partner companies such as Lego Education Scientific American uh, etc etc and finally I was and finally I was selected as a global finalist in the, in the Google Science Fair yeah like so that's how I was so that's how I got selected back in 2016 and the story for 2019 is kind of similar i actually applied i actually applied for the google science fair uh two days before no one could two or one day before the deadline i uh, i literally had no intention okay okay like okay, 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 cuz i cuz i cuz only two people cuz i believe only only two 
only two other people have ever been able to get into Google Science Fair twice. Twice. From from, from what I know, but they can get, get into Google Science Fair twice as good global finalist. All right. Right. So, uh, so I literally did not believe that I could get in there once again. Uh, but my mom was really adamant about it, and and I was also and my sister had also worked on the project for a year with me. Uh, my sister had joined in as as a teammate, and and the sole reason why I participated the second time was because she was able to transform my my prototyping design into a into a skin like design. So she was able to transform. So she was able to completely bring down the design from here to here, like uh, to such an extent where it felt natural to to where where uh, where these paralyzed patients would feel more how should I say would would feel more at ease. Okay. So so that's one of the reasons why I applied uh, in 2019. And luckily, uh, and luckily, and luckily enough to do our hard work, dedication, and spending all spending all that time of, of vigorously on the project. We were selected as global finalists for 2019 as well. That that seriously is really amazing to hear. Now, another thing that most of us uh, people most of us go through as students and uh, we have got a really low amount of resources. I mean, obviously, you pr- probably face the problem of lack of resources while developing the project. Now, when it is on your computer, it's it's on your hand. You can do it. It's free. readily available readily accessible to you the resources but how did you get your first uh, i guess you used a 3d printer back in the day so that's quite an interesting question to be honest and i think uh, okay so let me think about this okay yeah uh, okay yeah. so i remember this particular moment all right uh, uh, and this was way back in the day uh, 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 i just started working with microcontrollers such as the arduino Like I, I was just starting to get into robotics, uh, and the question about resources. This is this is one thing that I sort of regret. Uh, that that I got access to these ele- electrical components uh, way later down the line. All right. So I remember. So I so I remember having my first robot at the age of fourteen, I believe. Okay, and that was what you call, and that's quite late. Okay, uh, what you call, and 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 to me that that was quite late because they were twelve years. Because there, because at that time I remember reading news articles, where wherein which stated that twelve-year-old girls were making Mars rovers. Okay, were literally making uh, models of Mars rovers at the time. Okay? And I thought to myself, okay, I am lagging behind. Okay, okay. <laughs> but but nevertheless, but nevertheless, I had access to a computer. All right, so I had access to a computer, and I spent all my time uh, trying to look at articles, trying to look at videos, and everything that I can. Okay, and I and I'll get back to this, and and I and I'll get back to this bit in uh, in some time. So, uh, so as I was getting into robotics, uh, as I was tinkering around with the microcontroller, I was uh, uh, I got interested in making a hand prosthetics, prosthetic hands, basically robotic hands for people that were born without their hands or had lost their hands due to some tragic accident. So I wanted to make these devices more affordable. And I had already made a few models using waste materials around the home, uh, using cardboard, using strings, using straws here and there. But I wanted to, but but I also wanted to, uh, uh, but I also wanted to uh, get this to the next level, uh, as in use 3D printing. Okay, so so I so I look up on the internet. I look up at companies that were providing this sort of facility that were that were giving the service out. And there was this one particular company called Make Real that really struck out. uh they had stayed, they they had they had uh top top of the line industry 3d printers and they had they had an amazing work ethic uh they had done multiple projects okay so uh okay like so there was so this is online website called 3d hubs which allows you to calculate how much you i would end up paying and at the time i calculated it to be somewhere around 200 to 300 rupees all right it was so sorry 200 to 300 riyals riyals okay right? okay yeah, like a, Not, not rupees, riyals. Yeah, yeah. Right, all uh, right, and and that to me seemed reasonable. My dad, my dad came that night. I told him about it. He wrote them an email to get a quote from them with an official quote. The very next day, they uh, the very next day they give a reply, and when I saw the email, I couldn't believe my eyes. Okay, it was nine hundred Saudi Arabian riyals. Okay, okay, for the part that I was looking for. Okay, so literally. 
what so that's literally 3 to 4 times more than what i was expecting yep okay and i was heartbroken at this time okay because i really wanted those parts but i also knew that that was an unreasonable price and i and and i wouldn't want my dad paying that much money as well but to my surprise my dad told me that he would email them back uh, uh explaining uh, explaining how this was a humanitarian project and not being done for personal reasons okay and i what you call and being the kid i was i was really excited but he told me that i kept on telling him like please don't do that please don't do that that's so unprofessional okay yep. they, they already said this code be approach other other companies so i was just going on with that okay but but my dad was really adamant about it and he just sent the email a few uh, so half an hour later he calls me back okay and he, and he just points and, and i remember him and i remember him pointing at the email okay okay so i go over there right so so i go over there and i couldn't believe my eyes okay all i saw were this 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 all right zero zero they, they had changed the code from 900 riyals to 0.00 saudi arabian riyals okay and they were happy they were exhilarated that i was that i was doing something uh in terms for humanitarian reasons and to actually help people out okay so what go and and that very same company later went on to fund my projects and two years later i was i was able to create exoheal which once again was which once which once again is a device that helps paralyzed patients recover 30 percent faster Yeah. So, 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 so the thing that I'm trying to share over here, okay, what I thought as a blockade to my work is where my dad saw an opportunity, okay, okay, and such opportunities exist everywhere around us, all right, and and this also brings me to the current scenario right now, okay, this current scenario where where in we are amidst this coronavirus pandemic, we are in this we we are in this high intense situation. I personally believe. that we students uh, that we students especially have been thrust into the situation of internal reflection okay yeah. uh, uh, and i believe this is because we do not have we do not have access to the same outlets we did before these outlets being going to school hanging out with friends or going to the movies going to relatives etc etc all right so we use these outlets to distract ourselves from the actual problem at hand right we'll go oh, okay and th- these problems being our our own insecurities our own past these might be our own regrets some things that we've been avoiding and we, so we use these outlets to run away from the things that caused us pain and to distract ourselves but now but now due to this lockdown situation okay even though even the, even though we as students are my even though we as students might be binging netflix all day or playing games there will indefinitely come a situation where we are fair all of these thoughts all of those memories just come gushing down our brain like okay? where we will be forced to think about this and i believe that's what that what that what's causing this mental health uh, what could that's what's affecting the mental health of so many students around the globe right now right like 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 okay, and i cannot stress this enough how crucial mental health has become especially during this pandemic for students to grow right uh so two weeks back so this is what happened to me two weeks back as well right i had just completed watching a tv show and for some reason and and for some reason i, I don't know why or or this uh or how should i say this cluster of memories these cluster of regrets that i had been hiding away that that i've been clogging up for the past two years just came rushing just came rushing through my head like okay? and i knew within that moment that i cannot run away from this anymore that i can't sit that that i just can't sit back vertically vertically and let this happen over and over again right so uh, so so i go over to the light switch i turn the lights off i i darken up the room i open the lamp up i keep a diary in front of me okay for safety purposes all right and i just start to think all right the the diary the diary the diary isn't isn't actually isn't meant for me to write everything down but but more of a source for me to but more of a source for me to keep myself in check okay and and i started having this conversation with myself i i i, I imagine having this conversation with myself okay, as if there is another zen sitting on the sitting on the opposite side of the table okay and i and 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 i'm asking myself these questions 
as to as to whatever happened in the past was it uh, 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 was that actually what had happened or was i thinking things differently you know you know like you know like uh, and this brought uh, and this brought me towards the realization okay that how imperative it is to to see our reflection for who we still for who we think we are for who we really are and for who we want to be uh oh. okay okay so i'll repeat this again okay is to recognize our reflection for who we think we are for who we really are and for who we want to be okay so so it's highly important to understand these three things and ask ourselves these okay and to recognize ourselves or okay, instead of for for these three things all right and and everyone almost always again arrives at a different answer but what you're looking for is a unison between between the, between the three of these all right in order to in order to have a clear path laid out mm-hmm. okay okay okay, okay like I, i and because of the situation because of the situation i, I and because of how high intense Uh, everybody is going through these mental mental phases right now these mental health phases okay a lot of people are feeling depressed a lot of people are feeling feeling anxiety uh so me so 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 me and a partner of mine uh uh, uh whose name is abdullah so so we are starting a new venture called so we are starting a new new mental health venture okay uh which will uh, which will which will essentially try and help to connect all of these people Oh, all right. <laughs> the the thing is, uh, me and my team, we are also working on a similar kind of project. <laughs> That's oh, I see. Yeah, we call it the happy place, I guess. And uh, okay. Yeah. So, but That's nice. a lot of projects coming in, and we thought we should be making a place where everyone can share the best parts of their lives, so that other people mm-hmm. can motivate it through this, and then we can have another community. and the chatbot system chat system not bot hmm. system where uh, right you, right if you want to help someone and if you need some help there would be just two dialog boxes then you can click if you want to help someone or if you need help so it's right right for anyone who needs help there's an option to be anonymous so okay we were working on so i just want to hear this idea too I, i'm really excited <laughs> mm-hmm. so the name of our venture is talk with friend and we are and we are essentially trying to create a platform where again, we are essentially trying to try to create a platform where people can help each other okay just say to work just as you had described okay, just as you had described but we are but we are also trying to bring in the professional aspects into this okay the the professional aspects of mental health so that people can also recognize their the issues that they're going through and better help uh, and better facilitate the process of helping each other out yeah So we be so we be so we've been researching so we've been researching on the so we've been researching on the uh, on psychological aspect uh, for for the for the past couple of months we've been interacting with we've been we've been interacting with physiotherapists oh, sorry we've been we've been interacting with psychiatrists with psychologists in order to better understand these these problems and to recognize the best approach that needs to be taken right now because because uh, a lot of because uh, so. So I was giving a talk the other day, uh, and uh, I, I, and and a lot of health experts were, were were on this call. Okay, health experts such as such as the head such as the head of psychology in the UK, uh, 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 the head of psychology from 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 Oxford, from from a lot of universities, what you call from from military backgrounds as well, talking about the psychological effects of of the lockdown on students. and what i had realized that a lot of the adults right now they are they are focusing more on this in more in terms of uh, more in terms of statistics all right all right so they've done so they've done all of these studies uh, on on which age group is being affected most on on what's on what's happening actually but uh, and the solution that they are coming up with is sort of like it is sort of like how to reform the education system although i do agree that that's highly important right now but but i as a student i as being in this situation also feel like they are completely going off the mark over here yeah exactly yeah <laughs> cuz students cuz students cuz yeah or what they cuz students have uh, they have a plethora of different problems right now 
okay and the majority of these problems have been pushed back like it's enough to do and this might be through multiple years for many students or it might be a couple of days or so okay but nevertheless a lot of these students have been running away from these problems for quite a long time okay and when all of these come up they create a plethora of different uh, responses they require what do you call it they uh, they require a uh, therapy uh, they require a sort of therapy custom made for them so right i want to add on something here uh, as you said there are a new plethora of problems that have just created just because of this lockdown the one that uh, right now all of the indian students are going especially uh with the academics here is the examinations all of them are oh like, definitely the thing is uh when you don't see something uh, you probably get really scared about that you know that there's right. some hiding which is actually dangerous and we we don't know what it is when's the danger going to come <laughs> the students mm-hmm. are really tense uh, about the decisions about the universities and as you said most of the you had conversation with psychiatrists the people in psychology from big mm-hmm. universities who are focusing on the aspect of academics which is really important by the way because the thing is after covid-19 the way we are going to study the way we are going to interact with educational institutions mm-hmm. is going to change in a very big very drastic manner but the yes. problem here is examinations right now uh, they give people a lot of stress obviously there's so uh, right. other, other problems here and in india just like you said universities are focusing on the aspect of examinations curriculum and academics of education yes education. exactly so what happens here is student just realizes that there's no one giving a fuck about their mental illness there's no one literally yeah, yes Yes, yes, that is honestly true, all right? That is honestly true, okay? The correct uh, and I and I can't and I can't stress this enough. It the education system that we have over here, okay? And and I don't mean and I don't mean all schools in India, but majority of the schools, like okay? majority of the schools over here uh don't actually uh don't, don't don't actually have the right track planned out. okay so uh, uh, so so i think we saw this so so i, so I think we all witnessed this uh two months ago that a lot of the universities a lot of colleges were pushing for exams even though majority of the majority of the portions were incomplete okay yeah, yeah. even though labs were not complete okay or okay, the students had not physically done anything right ready or call like and these you yeah, know and these online classes were just being forced upon the students say so, uh, what and as you all know many students are not privileged enough to have what you call to have a laptop or to have, have internet internet connection always available to them have internet connection yes okay and especially because of this or because of this corona virus situation in the in the in the first three months everything was unstable okay or or like, or like uh, people were just trying to get back home exactly. uh, like, i know many people that were just trying to get back home okay they were stuck in the situation they were in so so basically how to understand what each student is going through what you call like that different students have different learning paces exactly. right the educational system that we have okay it is really messed up 100% okay. like i completely agree with that so we are nearing the end of the interview interview and i think this is the final question i have to ask this is the most basic interview question i wasn't interested in it but i think for each person as you said it has a different meaning where do you see right. yourself 10 <laughs> years from today 10 <laughs> i want to know that i i'm really interested in this one <laughs> okay where do i see myself in 10 years from today oof okay okay all right uh so i'm not sure if i want to see this out okay cuz i'm cuz cuz i have thought this through okay i have thought this through and i and, and i finally do have a vision okay mm-hmm. okay but it's not to the point where i am Where, where I'm like consistently working at it. Okay, I would like to get to that point and then then claim, okay, okay, that this is what I'm doing. But although, but but, but although like uh, there is one thing that I can tell you that 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 I that I that I envision myself as a leader in both psychology and robotics. Yeah. So. So you can use an imagination to connect the dots between the two of these. Yeah, I'm getting it now. <laughs> It's clear. It's clear. So yeah, uh, 
that's it for the video podcast episodes and uh, that's the questions that i've got uh i hope you enjoyed the podcast i hope the people see oh yes enjoyed the oh 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 yes definitely i uh, it, it was it was quite the pleasure it was quite the pleasure of conversing with you over here it was quite enjoyable i i really loved some of your perspectives that you've had throughout the podcast and your questions were really interesting as well okay and i hope what you and i and i and i hope you work at this with the same vigor what you can continuing forward okay and and hopefully inshallah there is much more in store for you inshallah thank you thank you with that said i hope you guys enjoyed the video podcast make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this and i will see you guys in the next episode bye